So let us start working. First question we ask is this: What is the number of classes? Y three. There are four classes, right? E, C two, sigma v, sigma v dash. Four classes. So there are going to be four irreducible representations. So all this time, the question that we have been asking, that is answered in a second. We are going to have four irreducible representations for C two v. Fine. So to start with, let us name them gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, gamma four. Okay. Four classes. This gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, gamma four. Right. Lines are just guides to the eye. What next? The next question to ask is: What are the dimensionalities of these uh, four uh, irreducible representations? And this is what will give me the answer. Sum over i l i square equal to h. What is h? H is four, right? So L one square plus L two square plus L three square plus L four square equal to four. Can L L be a fraction? Can we have a three fifth by three fifth matrix? Okay. Can you have a minus twenty by minus twenty matrix? No. So L I has to be a positive integer, right? It has to be a positive integer. So now, see L one square plus L two square plus L three square plus L four square is equal to four. What will be the values of L one, L two, L three, L four? All have to be equal to one, right? So L I equal to one for I equal to one to four. That means for C two V, you have a total of four one-dimensional irreducible representations, right? What is the next job? I want to fill in. I want to know what the characters are, and to do that, we are going to start. To start with, we are going to use this. Chi i r square equal to h. In fact, we don't even have to go that far to start with. Can you fill in one of the columns? The first column is not very difficult to fill, right? Yes. Well, if you remember, chi i e is equal to l i. L i is one in all these cases, so I can write the first column very easily: one, 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 one. Okay, and I can write the first row also. The first row is always one, 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 as many number of ones that you have to write, because that would stand for something that is totally symmetric. What is the meaning of one here? No matter which symmetry operation you perform. Your basis remains unchanged. That is the meaning of character of one, right? Yes. Oh, how come you noticed it from there? I didn't notice it from the one foot away. Huh? Okay. So first row is always all ones. That is called the totally symmetric representation. No matter what you do, there is no change. That will be there for all symmetry point groups. Now we have to fill in the rest. How do I fill in the rest? Okay, we we'll start with sum over k i i, sum over r k i i r square equal to h. What is h? So the thing is this: these are all one-dimensional representations. You told me, right? So will you agree with me that all characters have to be either plus one or minus one? Why? What is the meaning of plus one? It does not change. Symmetric, right? What is the meaning of minus one? Anti-symmetric. Changes sign. What? What would be the meaning of uh, zero? Suppose I have one-dimensional representation with character zero. What would it mean? One-dimensional representation. one dimensional representation character zero would mean annihilation right it would mean annihilation you perform a symmetry operation and your basis vanishes not going from one basis to another basis going from a basis to no basis annihilation annihilation is definitely not a symmetry operation 
right annihilation is as non symmetry as it gets so 0 cannot be there what about 5 can I have a character of say 5 in a one dimensional representation let us see let us say I have some basis x and I have some symmetry operation r whose character in the one dimensional representation is 5. Now, when the symmetry operation operates on x, what does x become? 5 times x, 5 x right, what is that? If I hold you and somehow stretch you, then you are not going to call it scaling anymore, you are going to call it distortion. Right, so this is distortion. If it's just case multiplied by some non now some number that is not one, then it is distortion. Distortion once again is not a symmetry operation, so it cannot be anything other than plus one or minus one. Since all the representations are one-dimensional, the only characters you can have are plus one and minus one. All right, but the how many plus ones? How many minus ones? The answer comes from here. Some over are chi i r chi j r equal to 0. What does that mean? I know one representation anyway 1 1 1 1. Now, let us say this is a this is b this is c. So, now 1 into 1 plus 1 into b plus 1 into no sorry 1 into 1 plus uh, better write here. One 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 one. First one is one anyway. I'll call this A, B, and C. So one into one plus A plus B plus C. That should be equal to zero. And all are either plus ones or minus one. What does that mean? Out of A, B, and C, two have to be minus one. One has to be plus one. Okay. Now, knowing that what you do is you fill in the different places by the minus ones and plus ones, right. There are three places, three places and two minus ones. Three places have to be filled with two minus one, one plus one. How many possible combinations are there? Huh? Three and how many? Vacancies are there 1, 2, 3, right. So, it is good LHS equal to RHS as you always want it to be, no problem with that. You fill in 2 minus 1 and 1 plus 1. So, in all, in every representation, you should have 2 plus 1s and 2 minus 1s. So, this is what you get 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Question? Yes. Uh, we do not to start with at this point we do not you will be perfectly right to write 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 first. But as we will see we are not going to leave these representations named so generically gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 4 we are going to give them some names and when we give them some names we like to arrange them by those names as well that is why as always I have the benefit of hindsight. But to start with if you work this out and if you write it in a uh, scrambled order I am fine. Okay, are we okay? Can we go ahead? Can we go ahead? Okay, good. So now let us see the basis. What fits in where? Let us start with x, y and z. Let us start with z. Where will z fit? If you perform e on z character is 1. If you perform C2 and you consider C2 to be the, to be the Z axis character is 1. Sigma V what is sigma V Zx character is 1. What is sigma V dash Yz character is 1 all right 1 1 1 1. So, that, that is where Z belongs to gamma 1. Z is totally symmetric with respect to all the symmetry operations of C2V. Now, do you think that is the case everywhere? 
can I have some symmetry species, uh, no, can I have some point group where Z is not going to be totally symmetric, anything that has a sigma H right, this, this is Z axis, this is usually this is what sigma H would be. So, for reflection with respect to sigma H plus Z would become minus Z, minus Z would become plus Z. So, whenever there is a horizontal plane of symmetry, Z would definitely not be totally symmetric, ok, fine. What about X and what about Y? Consider sigma V to be sigma V to be Z X and sigma V dash to be Z Y. This is conventionally taken to be Z x, first one is x after all x comes before y in the alphabet. So, sigma v z x sigma v dash is y z. Right? Symmetric with respect to sigma v, say x is x is in the x uh, z x plane, so it has to be symmetric with respect to sigma v, whereas y is perpendicular to it. So, it has to be anti symmetric with respect to sigma v and the same logic holds for sigma v dash the behavior of x and y are just the opposite because the plane is now y z instead of z x fine simple ok. Now, what about x square where will it belong? x square suppose I take x square. Where will x square belong? x square is always positive, right? It has to belong here, uh, gamma 1. It cannot change sign, is not it? x square cannot change sign. y square will also belong there, and z square will, of course, belong there. That is not the case everywhere. It is the case here, but that is not the case everywhere. Okay. So, all the square terms would belong here. What about x y? Okay. What you could do is you could just multiply the characters and see what symmetry species you get. Okay. x y that means this and this you multiply gamma 3 with gamma 4 what do you get? 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 1 plus 1 good just checking if everybody is awake and attending. 1 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 1, minus 1 multiplied by minus by plus 1 is minus 1. So, we have 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 gamma 2. So, that is where x y should belong. So, then you tell me where, where y z should belong. See the, the nice thing about z is that all characters are 1. What is easier than multiplying by 1s? So, y z will belong in this case to the same irreducible representation as y and z x will also belong to the same symmetry species as x all right. Okay. So, we have now more or less completely constructed what is called the character table for C 2 V. There is something else that you will see in character tables that is R x, R y, R z. For now, I am leaving that aside because we would not really use that too much in this course. R, that R x, R y, R z just means rotation with respect to x or y or z. Sir, yes, sir. Not here, uh, that will come later. You will see z square or x square will not uh, go there directly. So, here z square minus x square will belong to the same place, but uh, here we do not need to invoke that because x square and z square directly belong to some irreducible representation fine. So, we are almost done almost but not quite uh, we better give names to these uh, irreducible representations we do not want to leave them as gamma 1 gamma 2 and all that. So, uh, and the thing is we do not have to make up our own nomenclature somebody much bigger has already done it, but even before we go that I want to make this point. The another name for irreducible representation is symmetry species. 
and I would like you to understand the meaning of the term symmetry species. See you look at this character table what is the information that you get? You get the information of how each of these bases behave with respect to each of the symmetry operations right. So, take x it is symmetric with respect to E, anti-symmetric with respect to C2, symmetric with respect to sigma V, anti-symmetric with respect to sigma V dashed. Is there any other symmetry operation left? E C2 sigma V sigma V dashed is there any other symmetry operation left for this uh, point group? No right. So, what we have done essentially is that if you just look at this line the irreducible representation you will know exactly the complete behavior of each of the bases with respect to each and every symmetry operation ok. So, that is what tells you about the symmetry behavior that is why these are called symmetry species each irreducible representation is called a symmetry species make sense ok. In fact, I like symmetry species better than irreducible representations if you approach it from a mathematical point of view like what we have done then irreducible representation makes sense if you approach it more from a chemistry point of view symmetry species is much more appealing fine. Now, let us go ahead and give the names and uh, there the system has been worked out by Mulligan long ago and this is what it is for one dimensional representations the names that are given are either A or B very systematic nomenclature ok either A or B when is it A when is it B it is not left to you you look at the characters one dimensional representation right. So, characters can be either plus 1 or minus 1 that is the advantage. Now, now, look at if there is a principal axis of symmetry then look at the principal axis of symmetry. What are the characters? If the character is plus 1 then you call the symmetry species A, if the character is minus 1 then you call it B alright. That is why looking at the character of the uh, principal axis of rotation. Now, now let us see let us see here. So, gamma 1 is it A or B? A, gamma 2, A, gamma 3, B, gamma 4, B. So, we have done some classification already, but it is not enough obviously, because you have 2 A's and 2 B's. How will I know which A is which? How will I know which B is which? So, we need a second level of identification. Mehak, you with me? From where? Okay. So, believe me when I say that if it is one dimensional we will call it either A or B but you that you better believe. Now, what I am saying is this to determine whether an irreducible representation is A or B what we do is we look up the character table and see what is the character for the principal axis of rotation that is going to be either plus 1 or minus 1. See, here for gamma 1 and gamma 2 is the character is plus 1, gamma 3 and gamma 4 character is minus 1. So, if it is plus 1 you call it A, if it is minus 1 then you call it B. So, these first two IRs are A and second uh, third and fourth are B, but then A and B are obviously not enough you have to call it A 1, A 2, B 1, B 2 something like that is not it? big A small a whatever. So, we need a second level of uh, nomenclature ok. And the second level is provided by of course, what is next sigma v e is hopeless in this matter right. There is nothing whose character is anything other than 1 in this case. Can the character of e be anything other than 1 ever? not in this case, but what happens if you have a two dimensional irreducible representation then the character is 2 character of E is not it then you cannot call it A or B you do not even call it C or D you call it E ok and then what if it is 3 
then it is called T, T for 3. Okay? So, that, that letter will change. No, no. But in this case what we do is A and B are defined fine you need a subscript or superscript or something. We start with a subscript. So, you look at what is next. Suppose you have C2 axis perpendicular to the principal axis of symmetry or suppose you have vertical plane any one of these two. If you have both then you go by the perpendicular C2 axis first that is the order of priority. Do you have perpendicular C2 axis here? No. Do you have sigma v? Yes. Which one do you go by? You go by the one that you have written first. All right. You go by the one that you have written first. Fine. So then next is very simple. If that character is plus one, then there's no point in writing another letter. You write a number. You use a subscript of one. And if it is minus one, then you use a subscript of two. Simple. Now see. These two are A's, gamma 1 is A, gamma 2 is also A. So, chi of sigma V here is plus 1, chi of sigma V here is minus 1. So, this is A1, this is A2 and that is Y. You ask right why I have written that uh, first because it is A1. So, I am writing it, writing it in some particular order that is all. Are we all okay with this? Very simple. Okay. Print to the principal axis of symmetry. It is not there. Then it would have been not C to V, but something like D to something, something. Okay. So now we know the, what the names are A1, A2, B1, B2. Now the character table is complete except for that Rx and Ry. At least nomenclature is complete. All right. Now, the thing is there is no guarantee that all uh, irreducible representations have to be one dimensional. We are going to see some example of two dimensional irreducible representation today itself. All right. So, what happens if it is 2D? It is E. What happens if it is 3D? It is uh, T. That is one point. Actually, that should come later. But uh, even before that, the issue is these are not the only symmetry elements, right? You can have a sigma h, right? If you have sigma h, this is what you do. If the character of sigma h is plus 1, then you use now instead of subscript, you use a superscript, you use prime. And if it is minus 1, you use double prime. These are very simple rules that we unfortunately have to remember x double prime. And then you could also have inversion center of inversion. So, if, if the symmetry species is symmetric with respect to inversion, symmetric means what is the character? We are only talking about one dimensional representation so far. What is the character if it is symmetric? 1. Then you call it G. Then you use a second subscript of G. What is the meaning of G? Gram? Gerede. Gerede means symmetric. And Opposite of G is U, unjerere, not symmetric, anti-symmetric actually. Okay. So, now see everybody knows about uh, the, those two sets of D orbitals T to G and E G. Where did the names come from? The names came from here, the Mulliken nomenclature. E G, what are the D orbitals in E G? z square x square minus y square right they belong to e g that is because when you look at the character table right of uh, o h octahedron you see that there is a symmetry species that is two dimensional and the name is e g that is where your uh, those two d uh, orbitals will belong and t 2 g is another three dimensional symmetry species, three dimensional irreducible representation in the OH group that is where the other three d orbitals belong that is where the name has come from E g and T 2 g. Okay. Uh, when you talk about an octahedral uh, uh, tetrahedral complex for example, do you call them uh, E g and T 2 g anymore? What do you call them? Because 
the question of G or U does not arise anymore. There is no center of inversion. Okay, so the so the name those names actually come from here. Okay, E T what we are talking about all comes from here, and we'll have a chance to uh, talk about those as well little later on.